Here is my rapid approach to fat loss if you're looking to lose as much body fat as you can before the end of the year. Now, what do I mean by rapid approach to fat loss? I mean being aggressive for your diet, you know, being aggressive with your training. So you can try and elicit a really remarkable transformation over the course of the next 12 to 16 weeks. Now, this isn't something that I'd recommend to everyone. You know, if you're really pushing this hard and you're being very aggressive, it's not necessarily going to be something that's going to be fun. You know, you might find that going through this kind of process starts to affect your social life a little bit. You know, you might start to feel a little bit hungry, but at the same time, short diets can work. If you really send and push this really hard, you know, you're going to be able to achieve an incredible result in something that actually could have taken you a little bit longer if you're of like half-assing it you need to be all in to be able to achieve this i'm going to give you a quick rundown of kind of how i would maybe approach a really rapid sprint of fat loss to try and get as much body fat off as you can over the course of a fairly short time frame so look as we know you don't be able to lose body fat unless you're in a calorie deficit that is the most important aspect to this entire process and now what we can do when it comes to maybe being more of an aggressive calorie deficit is we can just keep our calories a little bit lower so how low do we want to go now realistically if you're looking to lose fat pretty quickly you might want to put your calories to around 10 calories per pound of your body weight and if you want to be even more aggressive you might want to drop it to around eight calories per pound of your body weight which is relatively low i'm not saying that it's not you know you might be doing the maths on this and thinking Jesus, this is pretty low in terms of calories. You know, it is. So this is why it's really important that you set this up in the correct way. And what you're going to want to make sure that you do firstly is actually consume enough protein. This is the most important thing, okay? And realistically, even going through this process, you still could lose a little bit of muscle, even if you are, you know, having a high protein intake because your calories are going to be pretty low, maybe a little bit. So when it comes to protein intake, we want to be at about one gram of protein per pound of our body weight. And you're definitely going to want to be at a pound if you are doing this aggressive approach. Sometimes I'd recommend that you go maybe one gram of protein per pound of your ideal body weight. So you know where do you want to be in terms of weight and you could use that as a figure. But if you're dropping your calories super low, then you're going to want to go high protein because not only is this going to help protect muscle, but this is actually going to keep you full as well. And it also is a higher thermic effect, which means that you actually burn more calories from more protein that you consume. But definitely for the fullness aspect, we want to try and make sure that our hunger is not through the roof and protein is the most filling macronutrient. So a high protein intake is going to be essential. Now, this is going to make sure that you consume lots of, you know, lean protein sources, chicken, you know, turkey, lean beef. The leaner ones are probably going to be a bit better for this approach because you can, you know, get your fat from other sources. And essentially, you know, you're going to be able to get more kind of bang for your buck in terms of protein sources rather than things that are going to be so super high in fat at the same time, like, you know, a high fatty steak or something like that, which most of the time would be fine. But look, we're trying to do this rapid fire. So when you've got your protein set up, when you eat calories set up, you know, that's a good starting point. What you want to do next is make sure you're actually consuming enough fat. Fat is an essential macronutrient. People don't understand this sometimes. Dietary fat is essential for our body to be able to uptake. We can't, you know, do certain things. We can't absorb certain minerals and vitamins without having a certain amount of fat within our diet. So we have to make sure we do this, especially for hormone production as well. We are too low from a fat perspective. Our hormones are going to start to feel crap. We're going to probably start, you know, showing signs of low testosterone and not being able to function at our very best. So even if you are rapidly trying to lose fat, do not drop your dietary fat too low. You know, like 20, 30 grams of fat per day is too low. You need to make sure you're having really for a guy, say 50 grams, maybe for a girl from low calories, you can get away with 40 grams of fat per day. This is going to be things like avocados, nuts, oils, eggs, even dark chocolate. These types of food are really good. They contain a lot of healthy fats, you know, fats that our body can actually utilize. I mean, typically unsaturated fat is what we want to be trying to aim for. So when we have these fats within our diet, this is going to help us from a hormonal perspective. And it's also going to help us from a satiety perspective. Now, when we eat more fat, it actually slows down the digestion of food. And if we want to stay full for longer, we want to slow down the digestion of food. It leads to a more sustained energy source as well. So having dietary fat in there is essential. You got your protein solid, then you got your dietary fat in there as well. That's a very good starting point. And then whatever's left, you can kind of use to make up in terms of carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are the only macronutrients that are not essential. Now, I'm not saying they're not important. So please don't think that, you know, carbs are going to make you fat because they don't. But what I mean by that is that our body doesn't actually need have carbohydrates to be able to function it can you know adaptively change and we can still survive and be fine if we don't consume ma massive amounts of carbohydrates this is why people do things like keto again i wouldn't recommend it but this is the thing so if you drop your carbohydrates a little bit lower 
you're going to see a more aggressive approach to fat loss. You're probably going to lose fat quicker and you're still probably going to be fine. You know, if you choose the right sources of carbohydrates, maybe just consume them around your workouts and maybe consume a portion of carbohydrates before you go to bed. You're probably still going to feel good. You probably still have good amounts of energy and it's just going to save the calories a little bit as well. And when I say good sources of carbohydrates, you know, I mean things like rice, sweet potato. I mean, things like, you know, rolled oats. Like these are good sources of carbohydrates that are going to be a much better response when it comes to insulin. And essentially you just make up the rest of your calories with these carbohydrates and that will be a good start when it comes to fat loss. Now, we ideally want to be trying to elicit at least a 500 calorie deficit from our nutrition, maybe even more. You might be able to push it to a thousand calorie deficit. It's going to lead to even quicker fat loss, but at least 500, at least 500. This would be considered maybe more of a moderate approach that this is going to see you losing fat pretty quickly just from just from a nutritional perspective. So when we've done this, we can start looking at things like exercise, okay? We need to make sure that we're doing a certain amount of exercise is definitely going to help when it comes to fat loss. And when I say exercise, I also just mean movement as well. So we're going to kind of, you know, put it all under one umbrella. We've got exercise from training, and then we've also got the movement and the steps that we do every single day as well. It is essential that you are doing a lot of steps. If you're trying to lose fat aggressively, and you're only doing like 8,000 steps per day, you're not going to lose fat aggressively. This isn't enough. You need to be hitting 12,000, 15,000, maybe even 20,000 steps per day. You might be thinking, how the hell can I do 20,000 steps a day, Chris? Well, you're looking to lose fat aggressively. You're looking for a rapid fat loss approach. You need to be able to put the work in to achieve this. This isn't going to be easy. I never said it was. You need to get the steps in. So even just start off at 10,000. When you've mastered 10,000, you go to 12, then you go to 15. 15 is probably what I believe to be, I think, a realistic amount for a lot of people that also elicits a huge result from fat loss. So maybe try and set yourself up around that spectrum to really get the most out of it. Steps contribute to a good amount of calories that we burn every single day. They actually contribute to more calories that we burn rather than exercise. Our non-exercise activity thermogenesis can make around 15% of the calories we burn across the day, which is more than exercise, which is sometimes only about 5%, sometimes 10%. So it's worthwhile really investing in the step card target and utilizing that for fat loss. Really focus on going and walking and getting more steps in and being active because it's massively going to help you from a fat loss perspective. Then we have got things like cardio or weight training. Now, weight training is not there to help with fat loss. So I don't even want to you know, try and mix this up in any way whatsoever. Weight training and cardio, they are separate. We are lifting weights to not burn calories. Doesn't matter how many calories it says that you burn or your Fitbit or your Apple Watch, you lift weights to be able to protect muscle, which I'm gonna get onto in a second. When we look at cardio, this is here to be able to burn more calories than we use at all. Now, if we're looking at an aggressive approach to fat loss, what do you think that means from a cardio perspective? You're probably gonna to wanna to do more cardio than what you might've done if you're just looking to, you know, take it a little bit easier or you're looking at this from a, slightly more sustainability approach you're going to want to smash the cardio if you're looking to lose fat quickly okay you might want to be doing up to 30 using 60 minutes per day every single day to see quick results but that is what it takes if you want an aggressive approach to fat loss you could do 60 minutes of low intensity cardio every day whether that's a cross trainer uh, incline walk the stepper and you're going to lose fat pretty quickly i promise you that now especially if you get your heart rate in the right place which you know you might be looking at taking that just above 100 maybe at you know, 120 or something like that you can do that and you're doing cardio for an hour a day you are going to be in a pretty big deficit from a cardio perspective because that's a good amount of cardio to really start seeing kind of calories being burnt at a more aggressive rate so cardio is going to be i think more essential especially if you're looking to be aggressive with your fat loss approach to see you losing it pretty quickly you can then look to bring other moderations of cardio in there as well maybe a little bit of hit you know something like metcon based these are all going to contribute towards calories being burnt as well hits great because we get what we call epoch which is essentially the way that we actually burn calories later on in the day from doing hits so it kind of like raises our body's intensity and our metabolism up a little bit so we can kind of burn calories at a slightly higher rate throughout the day so it's good to kind of maybe do a little bit of a mix of hit and a little bit of a mix of lists as well and i'd say trying new cardio in most days as i said like we're looking to lose fat fast so you need to be aggressive with your approach and try and make sure you're doing that then on to weight training. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this a little bit separately is because your steps and your cardio, they are pretty much just there to, you know, elicit as much calorie burn as possible. Burn calories and increase as much expenditure as we can. Ideally, we want to be trying to get at least another 500 or even maybe seven to 800 of calories burn from steps and cardio. You know, you might get 500 from your step target. You then might get another 300 calories burnt from doing cardio. That's 800 calories there, plus on top of the deficit we've created from our nutrition, which is let's say between like 500, maybe even higher than that, 1,000. You can see the kind of deficit we're creating here, which is going to lead to a quick response from a fat loss perspective. Then the weight training is essential. If you are trying to lose fat rapidly and you're not lifting weights, you are not going to lose fat because your body is going to start utilizing muscle for fuel instead and you just lose muscle. So keeping your weight training in there, no matter how aggressive you're trying to be with fat loss, 
stop just smashing the cross trainer or smashing the cardio machines. You have to lift weights as well because this tells our body to hold on to muscle. You know, this tells our body to that we, that we need the lean muscle, that there's demand for it to keep it so that you're actually going to sustain and not look skinny fat and hold a good physique. So the weight training is essential and ideally you need to be doing this at least three days per week. But look, you're here because you want aggressive results. I say you need to be doing this four days a week, maybe even five days per week if you're really looking to build the best possible shape and physique that you can you know, over the course of the next few months. So weight training is super important. Now, when you've got these things laid out, what can you expect? I say you could be looking to lose anywhere between one to two kilos, maybe even more than that per week, depending on your weight, depending on how much you weigh. I say you'd be looking to lose potentially 1.5% to even 2% potentially of your body weight per week because this is aggressive. Like we normally work on the basis of about 1% a week with our clients that you know aren't looking to be really aggressive for their fat loss approach, just a normal fat loss approach. So if you're looking to take it up a notch, we can start working across maybe more of those numbers. Like I say, 0.5%, 1.5, 2% of your body Body weight per week so if you're looking at around two to four pounds and you do that consistently for eight weeks you're going to see a big difference in the way that you look pretty quickly so it's going to lead to a great result now when you've got all these things in place what is the most important thing that we can focus on towards this it's consistency like if you can't see yourself following this approach for at least eight weeks there is literally no point you might as well not bother this is just going to lead to you falling on and off the wagon and you're literally not going to get the result you want over the next 12 weeks you'd be better off just losing half of that amount of weight and actually keeping it off so that you can do the rest in january rather than trying to do it all now and essentially just failing and going on and off and on and off so Honestly, look at yourself in the mirror. If you feel like, you know, setting up an approach like this seems too much, don't do it. If you're ready to put the work in and really go after it, maybe this could be something that you could do. You've got to be consistent. You've got to do this week in, week out, and understand that it's not something that you're going to do forever. It's a short diet to get the weight off where you can then focus on maintaining, you know, working into a bit of a reverse diet, which is going to keep you in shape for the rest of your life. So you've got to be honest when it comes to that kind of thing. So, I hope you find this video useful, guys. This is not me telling you to go and do this. I don't recommend dieting really aggressively. Occasionally, we might get some people at Fit Lab that we, you know, run a protocol like this with, want to do a shoot in like eight weeks or something. Then we're like, right, you know, it's going to be tough. But most of the time, we want to work towards something that's, you know, too demanding, too aggressive. But look, you asked for it. You want an ultra rapid approach to fat loss. This is kind of the way that I would look to set something like that up. I would eat in a big calorie deficit. I would focus on a lot of steps, a lot of cardio, I would make sure I was smashing the weights to retain as much muscle as possible, and I'd be super consistent. I set myself a deadline that I was going to achieve this goal by a certain date because this is going to force and create daily action. If you don't even set a date, you're probably just going to end up not, you know, working towards. You're not going to have anything time bound there that you're going to want to be there by a certain point, which is probably going to lead to you you know, again, giving up at certain points. So follow this approach. If you want me to kind of map this out for you in a bit more detail, feel free to just drop me a message on my Instagram, Chris underscore Fit Lab. I'll help you kind of piece this together a little bit and we can potentially even see if we're a good fit to work together for the long run. So I hope you find this video useful. Hit the subscribe button if you have. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you're notified every time that I post. And guys, as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video.